<laughs> Have a look at this ass, this bird shit. Look at it. <laughs> Who do you reckon did that? Bloody big bird from Sesame Street. <laughs> What's going on, babe? This, where's all the sand gone? This isn't, this isn't Stradbroke. Yeah, I know. I miss Stradi already. Who yeah. would think you can miss sand being in every single part of your home and car? Everywhere you can think. I know. I miss it. But nah, we're in Biwa. So for those of you that don't know where Biwa is, it's in like the Sunshine Coast region of Queensland. I'm taking note. Not everyone knows where everywhere is, so I might mention places we are from now on. But here we are in Biwa, we're lucky enough to stay at my good friend Nick's place. Well look, there was this kangaroo and he was trying to spark up a light. So we're hanging out here for a little bit, just trying to, I suppose, sort out our battery setup for our caravan. We were looking at upgrading that, so we got a bit of research and a bit of looking around to do in regards to that whole setup. Um, there's some stuff, cool stuff to do around here too, there's like a national park we want to check out. There's these mountains out the back there, I'm going to try and climb. They're the Kuchin twins, those guys just there. Um, the beach we can drive on isn't too far away, so we want to go do that. And my battery setup in the ute needs some attention because it is full of bush fixes and last minute installs that were done to their work, but they're not neat and they're not done right. Fit of the string, mate. Keep the hat down. <laughs> Keep that profile nice and low. Don't want me hat flying off. <laughs> no hat, no play. No hat, no play, ladies no play. and gentlemen. Woo, you ready, boys? Are you excited to go to the beach again? It's only been a couple of days. Yeah, I'm excited to go to the beach again. Me too. <laughs> well, it didn't take us long. We're back on the beach. Luckily, we haven't cleaned the car yet. Um, yeah, we still haven't cleaned the car since getting back off Stratty. It's been a couple of days. But back on the beach, we're here with some mates, just hanging out. We're doing a day trip. What happened, Mr. Drifter? Oh, <laughs> hey! I'm What's on, on here, Nikki? <laughs> She's all sealed back on. It worked. We just pulled the tyre. Kept pulling the tyre um, to try and seal it as it inflated. And I just popped the bead back on and happy days. You're gonna make your own. Bye. Make my own wraps. My limit's one per one person. One per person, nice. <laughs> okay, good it looks. What's in there, babe? Bit of onions, a bit of avo, bit of mushies, shallots, capsicum, rocket, the good stuff. Good stuff. <laughs> Yummy. <laughs> oh. How's the order, Nick? About that. About that. <laughs> bit fresh out there, I reckon. Have a look at this thing. Thanks, Maddie, for the for the new microphone. So we're here with John down at the beach. How, How you going, going, John? Good, good, good. <laughs> <laughs> what do we got here, John? Some lollies? My you... favourite. Sour Patch Kids? Mm -hmm. Do you mind if I have some? I mean, out of that bag. <laughs> oh, I thought you were going to get me another bag. <laughs> oh, I was like, not that many. If you like, mate. Yeah, sweet. Can, I, can you feed it to me? Only because you said please. Yummy. <laughs> 
All right. Hey, I'm EA. I Daryl. Daryl. Because <laughs> you look horrible, now you're going to be on camera. Okay, okay. Ask me something. Do I hold Ask me something. Do I hold it? You can hold it if you want. Right, I'll hold I'm it. not really good at this. I don't interview people. Okay. Should I interview myself? Yeah, yeah. All right. So, guys, we're down at um, Shreddy today. Shreddy? <laughs> <laughs> Friday. <laughs> So guys, we're down at Friby today. We've got the surf going really hard. It's really pushing in the waves today. We got Leah here today. Um, <laughs> just move for a second. <laughs> no whales out today, unfortunately. Um, there may have been some dolphins earlier, but unfortunately we weren't here. Um, we had them in the first half though, guys. <laughs> we had really good. Smash this is my first time on camera, so I don't know what I'm doing, but. <laughs> Yeah. That's gold. Oh, that's so good. You want to turn? No, I'm fine. No. <laughs> All right, Nick. We're here with um Nick. So tell us what happened earlier, Nick. Why did the tie up come off your rim? Well, look, there was this kangaroo, and he was trying to spark up a light, and I thought it'd be rude to run into him, so I just had to turn it last second, man. He was just, thankful. He gave me a beer for it. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> well, sometimes those kangaroos you got to watch out for them, mate, because here in Australia. They're just out to get you. Mate, they just want to get in the front seat with you. They do. Huh. They do. Sorry, guys. No audio here. Shout out to the cameraman, Maddie. Not sure what's going on there. But you missed out on a hot tip with Tony about how pine cones are fantastic fire starters. So you can tell when horses aren't impressed, they're a bit how you're going about something because their ears will go back like this guy here. Okay. So you know, he, he's interested, he wants some grass. He wants some grass. <laughs> Alright, we're going to keep rolling. Stony Creek day use area. There's a little swimming hole around here. We're gonna go find it. There's some toilets here as well. They actually look pretty tidy. Pretty new looking. Pretty new looking, I'm impressed. And it's so quiet. It's a Sunday, midday, and there's only one other couple here. What a cool place. It's pretty quiet. Come on, Lee. Leo, I'm gonna eat your mandarin. Come on, I'll pick you up. It smells That'll good. Give you a boost. Oh, how good are mandarins? Oh, oh yeah. Oh, yeah. 
That's really cool. <gasps> Look at the water, Braxton. It's so clear. Do you want to test it out? See if it's cold? It's deep. Oh, no, you can what? still see it. It goes deep. I reckon we're gonna have some food, then we'll go for a bit of a wander. Okay? Let me explore. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Whoa, Leo. Leo. He's keen. Big one, Leo. Oh. Go, mate. You got a stick, that's sick. How cool is this way? Jump out back so I can take a photo of you on that log. It looks cool. <laughs> back in the day. Good at people putting rubbish in the floor, eh? Nah. Chuck it in the back, mate. Thanks, Braxy. Yeah, in the back of the ute. Yummy. Oh no. Look at your hands. You like the mulberry? I want more. You want more? Is Nick finding you some more? You found some more. Look at this tree. This tree's huge. Yeah, Nick found more. There you go. Thank you. Thank you. Oh. Yummy. Is that one I just saw before? Oh, yeah, this one. Look at it. <laughs> oh, it's monstrous. It's huge. Absolutely huge. I feel like it deserves to stay. It's that big. Yeah, it's not quite ripe yet. Really? It's gotta be really dark. Yeah, oh, yeah. I think I gave Leo like a super. Look at your hands. There's no purple. That's like not quite ripe, but that's about the color you want. Want it to be like almost black. Almost black. Yeah. I remember as a kid, our neighbor had a mulberry tree, and we used to climb up a ladder, and as his like tree would hang over to our side of the fence. Thanks. We used to always like as kids grab them. 
Brax doesn't like them though. Hmm. You got some bananas. There's no bananas there. Yummy. It's a couple of bananas. There's some starting here. So what type of bananas are these? Do you know? Uh, I think these are lady fingers. They're like I was gonna say it's got like a lady finger shape, mm. or is it too soon? Do you know to why they curl upwards though? No way. So they point towards the sun. Really? So the tails on them always point towards the sun. It's sort of like a sunflower, I guess. But oh, that's cool. See what Brax is doing. You got some sticks, Brax. Probably cut up some vegetables, get them ready to cook over the fire tonight. Actually, I don't know. Are we doing vegetables over the fire? Or just the pork. Just put them. Just put them in the. Oh yeah, in the in the cooker, camp camp oven. Try another pork roast in the camp oven. Just gonna admire these little brush. Such a cool colour. Just cut up some veggies. And then we're going to chuck it in the camp oven. Haven't done veggies in the camp oven before, I don't think. So hopefully it works out. I mean, I've got forgetta. I mean, every ta everything tastes better with forgetta. So, yeah, let me know. How do you cook your camp oven veggies? Like, do you add, I don't know, some other spices and herbs to make them taste good? I don't know. Let me know in the comments below because I am such a novice when it comes to this type of stuff. Alright. Oh shit. How do you like veggies? Oh. So many veggie balls, man. Yummy. And the rest? Getting dark. Yummy. It's getting dark. Yummy. Getting there. We don't have actual garlic cloves, so we've borrowed this from Nick. Schnickles. Shout out to Schnickles. Yum. Yum. Look at you, mulberry face. Oh. oh, golly, go, 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 go. Just gotta be careful because the loops, like, you can pick up the bottom one and then get the other loop of the other one. Oh, it's a fire. Fire, yeah. Yum, yum, yum. That looks crunchy, yeah. Yum, it's always dirty. It's chai time! It's chai time, bro. This van hold. Crazy. This what? Morning. This van hold. Van hold? Yeah, it's not a house hold, it's a van. It's a van hold. Wow. <laughs> That's a first. That's <laughs> your hair, mate. Rex is getting a backyard haircut. Yeah, buddy. Give us a look. I think he's only ever been to a barber once. Yeah, in his whole life. Yeah, you've always done the haircuts. Yeah. I'm no professional, but she looks alright, mate. Nice, <laughs> sexy. The chicks still love him. <laughs> hey, mate. Uh huh? Yeah. Hey, dad, cut your hair. Look at that fade, mate. That is some backyard. Oh. That's the, you only get this sort of stuff in backyards, mate. <laughs> you can't get this in the shops. This is primo. Sweet. We're not cutting Leo's hair, though. No. Nah. <laughs> a long uh, he needs his shirt off because Brax has a shirt off. Look at that tea variety. I love this place. It's just around the corner from where we're staying. Oh my god, they have my favourite spread. Have a go at this little leprechaun. What do you got there? Box of goodies. It's all organic too. Woo, check it out. All organic and grown just around the corner. That's so sick, I don't, man. It's the same price as Woolworths, if not some stuff is cheaper. Really? Yeah. Cool, man. I'm keen to see what you got. No. I've got a few electrical goodies, as you guys <laughs> could probably tell by this bloody mess. It doesn't really look like goodies at the moment, but they are. <laughs> All stuff that's going to come in very handy. It's a bit handy. Look at these things. So, went to BCF to pick up a new tackle box. All right, little tackle tray for the fishing gear. Left with this random bag this dude gave to Leo to just give them away. They had these two little like compartment boxes in the bag, so I was like, perfect, good oh. excuse to 
organize all the electrical stuff. Like, look, man, you guys want some eyelets. I didn't even know I had this many eyelets, but <laughs> I've got enough eyelets to do a few wire ups, I reckon. A valuable bit of information for you is get yourself one of these little multimeters. Like, they're super cheap, inexpensive, and they're super handy for diagnosing any electrical issues that you might be having. Yeah, okay. So, I've used this thing so much as getting it, honestly. So, whenever we can't find Leo, we have a pretty good idea where he is. Leo, are you here? There he is. What do you got? What is it? Say it again. What is it? Where, where are they? Where are the mulberries? Hey? Mulberries, you gotta find the black ones, mate. You gotta find the darker ones. Let's have a look. That one, the big one. Yep, that one. Take it. Take it. Yum. Okay, Papa. I got black wheels. You got black wheels? Braxy is just doing um, an illustration of his story that he made last week with his live lesson with his teacher. They were learning about the concept anamatopoeia. Um, so it's pretty cool. He's just doing his drawing at the moment. Um, I know a few people have asked me how we're managing and call it road schooling. Um, distance, we're doing distance ed schooling. And to be fair, it has been a challenge. We've been doing distance ed schooling now for about two just over two months i think it is um and we still like haven't got it down pat um i'm not too stressed about it though if you can't tell we still do our normal school work monday to friday we do about two hours one and a half to two hours a day um some days we don't do around that mark but i basically just go with what braxton is feeling like doing for the day and as long as we're hitting those maths and english and science concepts um we're pretty content with it and he also has five minute breaks in between a less in between each lesson really but we still kind of wing it um so we use nepso the distance education school in port macquarie new south wales we decided to go with them because we did some research on distance ed schools in queensland and i just I don't know, for the price that you pay, I just wasn't totally happy with the school that we're currently with Nepsode. Um, they're so great. His teacher is amazing and they're super flexible, they're super affordable. He has one live lesson with his teacher each Friday. Generally goes for about half an hour and she's really cool. So we get given one of these blue packs um, and then in the pack there will have six weeks worth of content and resources he also has oh, one of these bags and inside has some more resources but we were so impressed when it rocked up they've honestly like given us so much stuff they got all new pencils um painting brushes paint um art and craft supplies basically everything and we pay 90 dollars a year like I said, just over two months in now. Still working it out, but it's going pretty well. Hey, Vax, how do you think it's going? Good. Yeah, you like me being a teacher? Yeah. Um, it's just the normal national Australian curriculum, I believe. We kind of change things as we go. We, we really rely on it for the fundamental things like maths and English and some science stuff. And I don't know, we really prioritize Braxy learning real life skills. So that's the most important thing to us. We obviously want him to pass school and do well in school, um, but we also focus a lot on learning through play and nature. And yeah, a lot of the things that Antonio does around the van and the car, we liked him to get involved in as well. And that's why it's important to us that he's still learning. <laughs> through just daily activities that we're doing and he still has risky play and yeah still be as a kid so that's what's most important to us and that he's happy 
yeah if you have any questions or if you can offer any sort of advice or tips for road schooling distance ed schooling thumbs up <laughs> thumbs up um leave them in the comments below or find us on instagram for no more snowmads like we love hearing from other people and other families who you know do the same thing or looking to do the same thing so we appreciate it what did you just do done pretty well all the wiring but all worked first go you happy with it mm -hmm. looks a lot neater it's not perfect there's probably still some things wrong with it to be honest but it's a lot better than what it was the old king's toolkit i've had this thing for years mate still going strong babe where's your ppe hey where's your ppe um this is ppe <laughs> this is more important when you're doing electrical work remove your negative terminal off your battery that's important Another hot tip for you. Um, when you're trying to pull your wiring through your firewall, what I do is I like to, I've got this bit of like, it's like garden wire sort of stuff. I run that through the grommet first down there and then I just tape my wires to that. Pull it through, it makes it a lot easier to pull that through than just trying to get the wires through by themselves. It makes a world of difference. There's another screw that's probably gone forever. Bugger. Alright, so I thought I'd give you guys a rundown of what I did to the car today because I've got no idea what the footage looks like. <laughs> <laughs> but we're going to run with it. So, what we've done is I replaced a 50 amp fuse I had mounted back here with a 100 amp circuit breaker. Uh, just because I'm pulling more current at the, in the canopy, so I need to upgrade that. I also ran my switch for my light bar from my engine bay into my cab, so this way. Just penetrated the firewall through one of the factory penetrations. It's always a pain in the ass, I hate doing it, but you really should have your switches in the cab. Yeah, I was like, who so doesn't? I just need to, yeah, I just need to replace... Um, the actual switches <laughs> oh with my ones. Oh hideous. Yeah, with ones that fit. What is that? I know, it's shocking. <laughs> don't. Come on. And what I've done at the back, where most of the work is. Get out of the way. And we're back with a new battery. <laughs> so I don't know where it died, but um couple power poles I've put in the back here positive and negative so I've got starter battery power in the canopy uh, and I've got all my other bits and bobs running off that so my DC DC charge charging that battery I also fitted a um, VSR so that um, I fitted that in the circuit that is my Anderson plug at the rear that runs the fridge so now I can turn my car off and not worry about having to unplug that uh, and it's not going to drain my starter battery dead flat so that's a win. I also had to relocate that from the engine bay back into the canopy. And just tidied everything up really, just made it a bit cleaner, a bit nicer. Uh, everything's a bit more accessible and there's no more dodgy, just as I say, no more dodgy bush fixes. The light switch pops off. <laughs> Didn't see that. Now there's no more dodgy bush fixes. Um, it's pretty good. It's still fairly simple. To be honest, probably still stuff wrong with it. If there's any auto spark, he's watching this, you're probably shaking your head going, this guy's a dickhead. And we're off to our next destination which is only seven minutes from this one yeah, but big draw of this one <laughs> big draw of me um i actually heard about this place i made a friend with a mum at a park that's next to where we are at nick's place 
and um, we were hanging out and she just mentioned that her friends own this property um, in Peachester and they're just starting to, I guess, camp it out. Camp it out. What's the word? They're just starting to let people... Camp it out. Yeah, that's not a bad one. <laughs> they're just starting to let people camp there. So it looks pretty cool. There's a creek that runs through it. You can have fires and stuff there and there's horses and sheep. So I was like, yeah, we'll spend a couple nights there. Let's see what we get up to. Let's see what we get up to, guys. Get up to guys.